Hi folks, Nick here with Lime Tree Laser Co. Together with Pascal and Mark and Bella with How TN Lasers, we wanted to put together a bit of a tutorial video on calibrating the z-axis of your 3D Field Tech UV laser. I know we've been seeing a lot of people in the Facebook groups who are struggling a bit and, and I was definitely one of those people who was having issues with my laser initially uh, and this process really made the difference between frustration and success. So if you're one of the people that's been having issues with your laser, hopefully this will help you. And maybe even some of the people who have, who have well calibrated working machines, maybe this will get you working even a little bit better. So follow along and, and thanks for watching. Okay guys, welcome to the video. So, this is calibrating your z-axis on your Fieldtech 3D UV laser um, and I've kind of come up with this process specifically for glass I kind of felt that most people have when they're having issues they're having issues with glass so why don't we bring that material into the calibration process now very importantly before you do this process is to make sure you've done your 3ds benchmark calibration if you have not, head over to YouTube and look up the Fieldtech online class and look up their 3DS benchmark calibration video. Make sure you've done that before you go any further with this one. On both of these calibration processes, take your time. You only want to be doing it once and we want to be as accurate as we possibly can be with all things laser and with any mechanical equipment we ever need to work on. Take your time, put on your glasses if you need to, make sure your measurements are as accurate as you can, can do. Um, now that being said, let's, uh, let's get started here. So here we are in Landmark 3DS. We are going to be working in our 200 by 200 millimeter working space. So our correction file, we're at our 200 here. And you can see this is uh, this this is the calibration that my machine came with. This is just a factory setting. We're going to be starting with this. Uh, at the end, I'll show you what my my values ended up being in the end. So let's start with putting the square. We're going to position it at zero zero x y, and we're going to move it up to one twenty millimeters in working height which from our correction screen you can see that our working height is 120 millimeters so that's what we're going off of today that's where we're starting we're going to use this at five millimeters wide by 10 millimeters tall we're going to apply that double check that we're at the center we are now this is where we start to differ from the field tech videos we are actually going to hatch this square rectangle uh, with an optimized hash, hatch, we're going to go 0 0.025 millimeters distance, line spacing, and at zero degrees. Only we only need one here. And what I find is this is a much easier way to, to see your beam strength. So let's apply that. Our parameters, we're going to run at 200, 45 frequency, and a 90 pulse width. So let's get over, let's just open up our Z calibration screen since we're going to be looking at this screen for a while now. So we're over to the laser now. We've got a, a flat piece of glass here. I've just got a piece of black cardboard underneath just to try and save the, the uh, aluminum base a little bit better. And it's, well, hopefully it'll, it'll help show up what we're doing on the video a little bit better as well. So that is our rectangle. I hope you can see it there. Now what we want to do here is we want to start at our first focus value, which you'll see on the side of your head. Uh, we start at 234. So let's get down there. And again, be very particular about how accurate your measurements are here and through every step of this process. This is the key. If you're going to be off on these measurements, then your calibration settings are going to be off as well. So here we are at 234 for the bottom of the head. 
<clears throat> now I've also unlocked my fine focus knob and we're going to be starting this engraving and we're going to adjust this focus knob until we get our most powerful beam and here we go so let's this takes a little bit of getting used to but you'll find it pretty quickly so there we are right there and now we're going to reference our caliper setting on the side of the machine we're at 14.15 now I am going to take a note of that number we're going to try and cram that number into our head because we're going to be using it a lot so that is our baseline 14.15 we're heading back over to Lenmark and now we're going to be working on a 115 Z value and we're going to be adjusting this parameter here to start we need to move our rectangle down five millimeters to 115. We're going to apply that. We're going to head back over to the laser and we're going to raise it by five millimeters. So we're heading up to 239. Again, I can't stress this enough. Be accurate here, as accurate as you as you can. We go 239 and now we're going to run the engraving again and this is where it differs from the field tech videos we instead of raising and lowering our piece of glass which I find a little tricky and tricky means inaccurate instead we are going to adjust the focus knob to find that that strong beam again That looks like it right there. Now again, we're going to reference our caliper value. So we're at 14.06. What we need to do is adjust our Z calibration value until we get that strong beam at 14.15 again. Now I mentioned that the reading from that was 14.05. We need that value on the caliper to go up. Now to do that, we're going to lower our Z value. Let's try 0 0.04. We'll hit apply. Back over to the laser. And we're going to run it again and adjust our fine focus knob while we're doing it. There we are. So now we're at 14.20. We're, we're a little bit high. So to lower that caliper value, we need to raise our Z value. Let's try 0 0.05. Back to the laser. You're, you'll probably start to notice that this is a lot of back and forth. A little bit. A little bit of trial and error, but uh, but it works great. So we'll run it again. Adjust our fine focus. There we are. Now sometimes you might have to, you might not, you may be fiddling a little bit. You may have to do it a second time. That's that's no problem. Let's let's do it again. There we are there. We're at 14.12. 14.12. So we are pretty close. We want that value to come up just a touch. So we're going to lower this just a touch again. Let's, let's even go as far as uh, 0 0.0425. And again, you can take this as far as you want, as, as detailed as you want. I think we can all agree that when you're, the more, the, the more accurate you can be, the better you're going to be in the long run. So, so it does, it does benefit you to take the time and do those settings properly. 
there we are, 14.16. Now you remember our baseline value was 14.15, so I'm happy with that. And now we're just going to continue going through the rest of the steps. The, the, every single value, you, you'll be doing this 24 times. So let's do it again. We're going to move to 110. We're going to lower our SVG also to 110. We're going to head back to the laser and we're going to raise it another 5 millimeters. This time we'll be at 244. There we are. 244. And then we're going to run it again. You can see that one started out quite a ways off. So we're at 13.96. We need that value to go up quite a bit on our caliper. So we're going to lower this. Let's try 0 0.07. Back to the laser and do it again. Kind of helps to go a little bit over each way and try to find your, your middle ground there. There we are. 14.23. So we got pretty close there. We need that number to go down, so we are going to raise this number. Let's go 0 0.075. Back to the laser. .17. I'd say that's pretty good. And that's all it is. So continue doing the exact same process, lowering your the Z value of your engraving, referencing this Z value here. Be sure to hit apply every time and go through every step all the way until you're down at until your engraving is right down at zero on the Z value. And that's going to give you a lot more consistency and a lot more power. I think, you know, obviously your glass, every bit one's a little bit different. So being as, as accurate as you can on this is re what's really going to help you deal with those inconsistencies in glass to start with. When you're done, very important, save your configuration file. Once you've done all this, you can you can put it back to your initial focus value, adjust your beam at that, lock it down. You don't even need to look at the at, at the caliper, set it there, lock it down, forget it. You don't you shouldn't need to be adjusting your fine focus during engraving. When when a machine is calibrated properly, you run it and you let it do its thing. Uh, I hope I've covered everything that I can. Um, Again, do your baseline calibration first. So I mentioned I would show the difference between my calibrated and my stock Z-correct settings. So you can see the difference between the calibrated values on the left and what the machine came with on the right. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions, and hopefully this can get some of your lasers running a little bit better. And uh, thanks for watching.